4MS Spherical Wavetable Navigator. The reason for this dramatic introduction is because my mind is utterly blown by this by this module. This is season two, episode eighteen of my modular journey, and today we are staring upon greatness. The 4MS Spherical Wavetable Navigator. I bought the Swan around April 28th of 2022. It came in around $600 US, which sounds pricey until you, until you get through this and other videos I'm linking in the description. I just have to stop and catch my breath once in a while because it's not too often that my mind is blown by a Eurorack module. I have fallen down a rabbit hole of hours messing with one thing, literally one pattern, one, I don't even know what you call it, one, I'm like a lovesick puppy. Six VCOs, uh, each with independent volt per octave, pitch CV, and wavetable selection, meaning you can hold one button down and pick its a wavetable for any of the six, so all of the six can have a different wavetable or variation of wavetable. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing right there. Uh, it comes with 12 spherical wavetables built in. In fact, if you hold down this browse button right here, you can see uh, the little red dot here. As you turn this knob, it counts up to 12 and then bounces back to one. So th these are your positions, 12 wavetables in the box. I haven't done this yet, but I believe you can record your own wavetables directly in here uh, and make your own custom wavetables out of live audio or by using the uh, the Sphere Edit software. So you can actually do all this editing on your, on your computer over there and then stuff it into here through this audio jack. Oh man. A really good visual representation of the three by three by three or 27 wavetable sphere uh, is to look at the actual editor itself because you can then see where you're going on an X plane, a Y plane, and then you're kind of traversing all three. Oh man, it's really hard to explain because I am not a math geek. Uh, carrying on, we have two audio outputs, a left and a right. If you're only gonna use mono, they suggest using the right jack because left is normal to over to right. The manual says you have options to quantize each channel to a scale. So there's a, there's a scale button here uh, and transpose. So there's octave and transpose. This is, this is octaves, this is semitones, and this is fine microtonal <laughs> adjustments here. And again, it's per oscillator. You can either do the whole bank, transpose it all at once, or you can do one single one at a time. Kind of amazing. When you want to go into chord mode, you hold, press and hold transpose and turn it. And you can see it's playing one note right now, but if I turn it once, it's playing two notes, probably a fifth. Then you turn it again, it's three notes, fifths, and a triad, and so forth. So it, it, it takes a little bit of time, and I, I'm nowhere near understanding this yet, but the, the display actually tells you what's going on, and it's almost like a, an alien language. So good luck, good luck figuring that guy out. Uh, but there's a lot, and the, and I wanted, I do want to say the manual is pretty amazing. Uh, I'll say it's really thorough, uh, it's easy to read, and uh, I wrote this down. And the 4MS company does talk to us like the excited children we are. So thank you, 4MS, because I am very excited, <laughs> very excited to get to get going on this guy. Last thing from the manual is that the entire state of Swan can be saved in the user preset. There's this longitude, latitude, and depth knobs. And again, this is again moving the X, Y, and Z kind of planes. <laughs> I mean, that's a kindergarten version of what's really going on. But yes, <laughs> that's kind of what's going on. Look at every single knob. It has white letters and then has black on gold. Everywhere you look, there is this style of label. And what that means is it is a, it's a push and turn. That's how they get so much configurability onto the, the deck of this thing without it being really large and a bunch of single knobs. And at first my notes were that I'm not a big fan of that. 
and I did write that I, I can honestly say they, how they cannot fit all this functionality onto this 26 HP interface uh, because it's already pretty big and adding a screen for menu diving would not make sense. Nobody likes menu diving anyway. But my update, as of playing with this for about 30 minutes, and this was a month ago, two months ago, uh, these, this is not so terrifying. Once, once you know what they do, uh, like LFO, LFO speed and gain. So you want to make it louder, you push in, you turn it. Over here, you have LFO shape. You want to shape it, you just turn the shape. Offset the phase, you push it and offset the phase. It's very simple. Same with spread, the thing I was just doing a moment ago. If you're not going to just transpose, you push the transpose and turn the knob. It's very simple. Uh, anyway, so en enough of all that. Why did I choose Spherical Wavetable Navigator? Well, first off, I really love the Ensemble Oscillator. So when it came to researching uh, my next oscillator, what kept turning up in all my search results was this swan monster. I was very intimidated by it because it looked really complex, and it is really complex, but I trust 4MS. Uh, Ensemble was great. So I kind, of, I kind of pulled the trigger and threw down 600 bucks, and I bought this Spherical Wavetable Navigator. Uh, within the first week that I had it, I developed the Friday the 13th Sonic Experiment, uh, which actually, it was Swan that inspired that entire song patch that got posted. How I plan to use Swan? Wow, we don't have enough time to go into all that. Uh, I'm just going to sum up to say as an oscillator, <laughs> as a noisemaker. Uh, however, there's other utility things that I'm thinking of that I don't know if this is possible or not, but I am, if, it, if this thing really allows wavetable editing, and if it's as extensive as I think it is, uh, I would love to get some of my own wavetables from some of my other classic synths, uh, like the Alesis. I would love to grab an Alesis wavetable, stick it in here, and, and play it. <laughs> in, play my Alesis inside Swan. I think that would be bitchin'. So as far as demos go, again, there's a whole lot of them out there. In fact, uh, Lupop, the Spherical Wavetable Navigator demo that he did, it covers it all. Uh, there's nothing I can show you that isn't in that video, so I'm not gonna do a whole lot of stuff except, except poke at the, the interface and make some changes. Let me pop up the, the audio. Give me some volume. So this is the default drone sound. Turn the browse button in the middle. Listen to that spread, stereo spread. That's awesome. All right, back to one tone. Uh, next page, we're going to play with the melody. We're going to try this one. Press this uh, LFO VCA button here. So in order to change just one note in the sequence, you hold down the, any one of the notes. Like, let's, uh, let's do A. So something like that. So then you can change things like the LFO speed. And then you can change things like the LFO shape. So it's almost like a little mini sequencer. So this is pretty much exactly what I was just messing with over here. If I flip up my, uh, my endorphins again. So this was my intro <laughs> to the video. We're using a ping pong delay. Thank you. 
and I have no idea what any of these chords are called. But to hear them as a chord, that's what that <laughs> That's what the chord would sound like. <laughs> Man, how many of these are there? Holy smokes. Wonder if it ever goes back to one. had to reset things for a moment there. So I think for the last thing I, I can show, um, I just want to, I want to twiddle with the longitude, latitude and depth real quick, and then I'll throw some modulation in and call it a day. So, I mean, I could go on forever and ever and ever about this, but uh, that, that's kind of the plan, is to figure out how to load my own wavetables, figure out if I can uh, change the pattern of what's being played here. Like, does it always also have to go in a linear fashion, or can it bounce around? I don't know that yet. Uh, oh, and I, <laughs> I guess something I forgot to show is the LFO... All these LFOs can patch itself. So you wanna, you wanna browse the wavetables? Throw that in there. Let's hear what that sounds like. That's gonna sound groovy, huh? Let's see what happens if we plug in another one. Yeah, see, this is where I go. This is this is my little slice of heaven right here. Beautiful, beautiful. I am gonna have so much fun with this. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. Uh, I had a much different demo plan, but honestly, there's so much stuff out there. Just go check it out. Check the links in the description. Uh, do a search, SWN on YouTube, or uh, if you can spell spherical, because I've spelled it like 16 times wrong in my document and <laughs> don't know how. Spherical Wavetable Navigator. All right, so <laughs> that's it. That's it for episode 18 of my modular journey. Oh, thank God. I can't take the excitement. Coming up next, the Winter Bloom Castor and Pollux Oscillator. So stay tuned for that.